This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP Elite Dragonfly. When HP announced this, everybody was ooing and eyeing, even though it's an Elite, it's a business laptop, it's on the expensive side, because it's so small and it's so light. It's a 360-degree convertible with a very pretty blue color, which is your only color option, but unlike the Spectre line, it's not very blingy, other than a little highlighting here on the hinge area. And it even has an oleophobic coating to avoid getting so gloopy looking like most dark matte laptops get. Is it still to die for now that the latest Spectre X360 13 inches out? We're going to find out now. So the casing is made of CNC magnesium, not the usual aluminum. And we've seen magnesium used in laptop casings before. And usually, yes, it's lighter, but there's more flexiness going on. So, you know, the display lids that deform, that sort of thing. HP did a really good job here with this for the top panel, the bottom panel, and the keyboard deck panel. They used relatively speaking, pretty thick 0.7 millimeter sheets of magnesium. And no, there is no flex here. This is a rigid feeling laptop. So if you're worried about the flexi torsion icky, uh, no, it feels premium and durable. And in fact, like I said, it's middle of STD 810G rated for shock, for drops and all that sort of thing, which is something that you're not going to find in the Spectre line. Also with the Elite line, you get things like, people often say they find them more stable. Well, in part because say the Spectre X360 consumer line and other manufacturers consumer lines are often more cutting edge with flashy features and then you put them in there and then you work out the kinks later. So Elites are a little slower moving in that respect, but usually very stable in the case of this, it certainly is very stable. and. No quirks, no problems, not at all. Just turn it on, you use it kind of experience. That said, the X360 by late 2019 is a very mature product and it's actually pretty good too. I really didn't find any problems with that. Other things it brings to the table are even more ports. Well, it has one on full-size HDMI 1.4 and you have a USB-A port and two Thunderbolt 3 full four lane ports and a headphone jack, of course, nano SIM card slot if you go with the optional LTE 4G and that's available in your choice of Cat 9 or the faster Cat 16, about $50 price difference between those two. So I would get Cat 16. It's a little bit lighter than the Spectre. You can see the weights on screen depends on which of the two batteries you go for. I think most of us want more battery life, so we're probably going to pick the slightly heavier version of it. it. It is light, though. It is noticeable, I have to admit, because I had to play IT person the other day, and our routers were going crazy, and I had to flash firmware and run all around with it, and I did choose it because it was the lightest and easiest to carry and modern and fast and all that sort of thing. One thing that's a little less modern, I don't know if it's because of the lead time with marketing announcing this to get everybody excited or engineering development happened to early on, but this is running Intel 8th generation quad core i5 and i7 CPUs. It's available with vPro if you want. So not 10th generation Ice Lake with Iris Plus graphics here. The speed difference between 8th and 10th gen CPUs isn't very big, but the Iris Plus does give an oomph for graphics. So that kind of hurts a little bit, and I'm sure we'll see an update to this and refresh eventually that has 10th gen CPUs inside. As you'd expect, RAM is soldered on and you can get it with up to 16 gigs of RAM. There are 8 and 16 gig configurations and it has one M.2 SSD slot and you can go from 256 gigabyte all the way up to 1 to 2 terabytes, in fact. So, yeah, here's the thing, that the pricing on this because it's a business laptop and again, you're big IT department who buys in volume might get better pricing on this, but the price of this is starting around $1,630 for a base with a Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD, and a full HD high efficiency panel isn't that bad. But some of the add-ons are, like if you want to go from a 256 gig NVMe SSD up to a one terabyte, that's like $667, which is like Apple level crazy pricing. If you want to do that same upgrade on a Spectre X360, it's $210. So hope your IT department can negotiate some nice pricing there. You get the idea. Our configuration has a Core i7, a 512 gig Intel Optane SSD, which seems to be all the rage with HP for the second half of 2019, 16 gigs of RAM and that full HD one watt panel. And that goes for around 21 to $2,200. Speaking of those displays, you have three choices that don't quite mirror the Spectre for 2019 or late 2019. You have that one watt full HD IPS high efficiency panel, and that's rated at 400 nits. And it's not a bad panel at all. And you can see the metrics on screen right now. It's perfectly pleasant. And for a 13.3 inch screen, that resolution certainly is sufficient for most folks. If you're doing serious photo and video editing, of course, you might want something higher than that though. And then there is that 4K display option. It's IPS. This one's not OLED, and I'm not going to complain about that too much because it's a quite nice panel. 
and you don't have any of the foibles of OLED like display burn in or whites that sometimes look yellow or a little bit gray. That one's HDR 400 and it's claimed 550 nits of brightness, so super bright. And lastly, there's the privacy screen, full HD option. Now that one's rated at 1000 nits, but that's because of the privacy feature where <laughs> the viewability and all that sort of thing to make it viewable for you. It's not really eye searingly bright in normal everyday use. With all of these panels, keep in mind that we don't see this so much anymore, but if you look in the Windows settings for display, you'll see that it does have an ambient light sensor. By default, it's turned on. That's going to adjust brightness for you. So if you find it's not as bright as you thought it should be, check that setting because that is turned on. If you want to use it outdoors, you probably will want to turn off that setting to get the maximum brightness, especially because this is clad in Gorilla Glass 5, which is pretty darn glossy. As HPs go, it's not quite as glossy looking as the Spectre X360 maybe, but it's pretty reflective. One thing that I like is with the Elite Series, HP uses Wacom AES pens versus the Entrig digitizer technology used in the Spectres, and they don't do the greatest job with the Entrig technology in terms of smoothness of lines and line jitter on diagonals and all that sort of thing, and Wacom AES is a bit better. It's also a rechargeable pen, charges over USB-C, comes with a little USB-A to USB-C adapter so you can charge it up. You have two buttons on it and you've got a few pen settings that you can see. And I like it a little bit better for the writing and drawing experience. Obviously, this is not really marketed towards artists, but it's good enough that you could have some fun certainly with it. That pen is not included in the box, so unlike the Spectre X360, that's a $76 extra charge. But you do get the leather black sleeve included in the box. In terms of performance and heat, well, it's about what you would expect from an Intel 8th generation Ultrabook with 15 watt quad core CPUs inside. It's good. Again, not 10th gen fast, but it's pretty decent. In terms of heat and noise, the fan does come on, has a single fan. If you're pushing it hard, you'll hear it, but it's a little Ultrabook. It's not going to make that much noise either. The bottom does get warm when you're using it. Um, it's wintertime here now. Maybe in the summertime it would get quite warm, but in the wintertime it's just warm, warm when moderately working it. It's very thin, it's made of metal, there's going to be some heat that you feel. Core temperatures on it are fine though. Since it's an Intel 8th generation platform, we have Wi-Fi 5 and not Wi-Fi 6. It's a good AX200 card from Intel, and it has Bluetooth 5. It's also a fingerprint scanner on board. The keyboard on this is backlit in white, and it's very good. It might not have that kind of ergonomic smile-shaped key, really cushy feel that, say, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga has that competes with this, but it's very nice to type on. I find it quite enjoyable. It's not quite as cushy, and it beats the Dell XPS line in terms of tactile feel and key travel. It has a Microsoft Precision trackpad on board, too. Battery life on this is going to depend on which resolution display you go with or if you go for that high brightness privacy screen and actually use that feature a lot. And you got a 38 watt hour battery and a 56 watt hour battery to choose from. We have the 56 watt hour battery with the most efficient full HD one watt panel on board. And battery life is in fact quite good. I've been managing 10 hours of use time with brightness set to 150 nits and as light to moderate productivity work doing things like flashing routers like I said you get the idea if you're pushing it hard if you're doing mega number crunching or editing video which probably isn't the executive target audience for this sort of thing well you'll get shorter run times the 4k IPS display will hit battery life probably for around two hours maybe not quite that bad it's a little more power efficient generally speaking for computer use than the OLED display option on the Spectre X360 certainly so for those of you also considering the consumer level laptop, laptops, obviously the Spectre X360 is a lot more affordable and pretty great. You're probably going to choose that to save some money. If you're looking at this versus the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga, there's where it gets interesting. The Yoga is bigger. It's not as pretty for those executive types who really want a very pretty and very compact laptop. And it obviously is a little prettier than Dell Latitudes on average, but not quite as... Easy to say that when it comes to the XPS 13 2 one which is a very attractive look, but again, that one's a little bit more consumer-facing and not business-facing. To get inside, unlike a Spectre X360, you don't have to remove the rubber strips over here. Thank goodness. So it's just five Torx T5 screws. You unscrew them, and then you... here. And then you work it up from the back. Some clips. Not too hard. Here's the underside of the magnesium bottom. And here are the internals. So you've got the battery over here, as always taking up most space. We have the 4G LTE option right there. So that's the, the modem for that. And here we have the M2 SSD. It is socketed and upgradable. It's just under a shield here. It takes a little bit of yanking to get it off, but there you go. There's the M2 SSD. There's your screw. So if you want to upgrade it, remove it, 
whatever. The RAM is soldered on here, and we have the Wi-Fi card that's also soldered on. Again, Wi-Fi 5 and AX200 card, which goes with the Intel 8th Gen CPU. And our stereo speakers are down firing here right by the battery. So that's the HP Elite Dragonfly. It is very light and it is very well equipped for something this small and light too. In terms of ports, in terms of options like LTE security, fingerprint scanner, vPro CPUs, Gorilla Glass 5 for greater durability, even mil STD A10G rating for things like shock and vibration, that sort of thing. But, you know, for those of you who are not corporate buyers and who are also looking at the Spectre X360 line, obviously you're getting many of the nice things about this in the Spectre as well for less money. You just have to decide which kind of buyer you are and how much the things that this brings to the table, like easier to open up and that mil spec kind of durability 4G LTE option, no matter what display resolution you're choosing, is worth it to you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.